welcome back. And uh, my co-host on the hour three, oftentimes when I'm gone, and also co-host for the Thursday show, uh, Tim Alexander, otherwise known as Lord Sterling. I guess maybe maybe you should wear a black outfit if you go back on these. But Lord Darth Sterling, how's that? Because <laughs> you're giving all all this bad bad news out well, again. You know, uh, I, well, yeah, but I was measured for uh, the, the parliamentary robe, which is ermine and all that. I forget how many tens of thousands they wanted for it. I thought. Okay, I think I might pass on that. You know, like I'm really that, yeah, pay, exactly pay yeah. a fortune to, to wear a robe once or twice in my life. You know, and yeah, I, exactly. I actually yeah. talked to him about the Earl's carnet, and that's about twenty thousand dollars. And yeah, right. Okay. Well, well you know. uh, all the real stuff I, I, to me, I, I find. I uh, take all that with a grain of salt. So yeah, all of that real stuff, uh, I find. Uh, you know, everybody's got some royalty in the background. And my my ancestor on my. Uh, my father's side was actually descended directly from uh, the uh, nephew of Louis the Fourteenth, who was also descended from uh, Mary Queen of Scots' uh, first cousin, uh, and uh, the MacLeods, if you want to call it, and the MacDonalds. Did I did I tell you my my uh, Burke's Peerage story? Uh, mm. I told this to a fellow Scottish Earl in front of his ancient castle one time. He about fell out of his chair laughing. Uh, the young man succeeds to a grand dukedom, and uh, he's the 17th Duke of Session Session. And uh, he decides to open the palace, you know, the ducal palace to the local, uh, you know, the clod hoppers. And they all come in, and he's standing there with his nose up in the air, and there's the portrait of his father, the 16th Duke, and the 15th Duke, and, and so forth. And young man comes in, looks exactly like him, but he's dressed, you know, very poorly, and he's obviously, you know, poor field <laughs> hand. And he says, right. Your Grace, he says, you know, they always told me we look just alike. We could be almost twins. And, he, <laughs> and the, That's the funny. says, well, I suppose perhaps your uh, your mother worked here in my father's day. And uh, he says, oh, no, your grace, my father was another in the palace. Or, my mother was another in the palace, but my father, he was your mother's footman, another left her side for 30 years. So much for the so much for the sixteenth duke and the fifteenth duke. So you know yeah, you, right. you say all this stuff. You know we we all say like I trace my ancestry back basically to just before the time of Christ. And all, okay, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every yeah. generation. That's funny. I mean, yeah, you know you. It, you, it, you it's you, quite a joke, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite a joke. Yeah. Let, let's get into some of the. Uh, I, I just say the recipe making we have now. As I mentioned, I used this joke before, but I want to expand it a bit. We have the two wolves. We have the Republican wolves and the Democratic wolves, and that includes Obama. And they're deciding, they're actually fighting over recipe cards while they have a pen. Oh, you're calling them wolves? That's a, wolves, you're, right? you're being very nice today. Right. Well, but these are not nice wolves. These are nasty wolves. These are not like, you know, fairy tale wolves. These are snarly, snappy, bloodthirsty raw fresh chomping wolves anyway they they want to cook they want to have a rice recipe with spices and everything they got the boiling pot with a nice burning fire just flaming up and uh, uh and they're trying to calm the sheep down and said don't now calm down sheep don't worry we're going to work out a recipe for dinner <laughs> and when you hear the buzz of the clippers about to take off the wool you know it's time for sheep to come to dinner <laughs> and when they did this last night, by the way, this deal, this is what I call the true fusion of corporate power and government called fascism. Fascism. Yes, yes, that's exactly so, how Mussolini we have, defined it, by the way. Yeah, and we have both of the we have both the what we call the corporate parties. We don't have democracy here, by the way. We don't have direct democracy. We don't have capitalism. That died a long time ago. True capitalism was the early part of this empire, where if you had a great idea and you're going to good make buggy whips or wheels for for uh, carriages or whatever, or leather clothes or or uh, special ironware uh, for for the kind of the the initial stoves that they had that wouldn't smoke up your house, you know the new ones the uh, that were invented here in America. <clears throat> Franklin what we stove. have is, yeah, the Franklin stove. What we have is a situation where we crush those who could create a new future for America in every way: education, you know, internet, uh, new products, new services, and credit, which allows people to go to school and not have massive debt, so they can actually start a family and have a home and everything, buy a car, which is good for business. No, instead, we're going to have them not control the cost of health care, give catastrophic insurance, which is basically another form of industrial fascism, 
in and now they're talking about bailing in and we've actually talked about this that they're literally and we discussed this yesterday with Harley 17 to 30 percent they're talking about this across the central European uh, banking authority which is now over all 17 countries they want to bail in people's house values in terms of their their private bank accounts their their personal savings their assets 17 to 30 percent will be bailed in to keep the bank solvent and well, now this, the bankers have this this philosophy: <laughs> what is yours is ours. Right, and what, what I think what we're about to see is we're about to see the storming of the Bastille. We're about to shine up and polish up the guillotine again. And I don't think well, that I think that would be great, or, or I prefer the idea of hanging uh, bankers and <clears throat> politicians uh, from lampposts and letting the flesh rot off their bones as a warning to those that would come after them. Uh, if you betray the country and the people, this is what you can look forward to. And in fact, well, actually, I, 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 got, I, I got a better idea. To donate the rope, but I, I you I, know, I, I, I got something even better because we, we could traumatize them when we kill someone. I call it spitball prison. What you do is you have people that are in prison, but we have to keep them in a semi-naked state. They, maybe they live, wear thongs, and they have to be working at hard labor, and the kids get to go through a plexiglass screen and pop, pop coins in and shoot at them and give them life <laughs> extension technology so a century from now these criminals can still be alive doing hard labor and being embarrassed as they're being shot well, at by yeah, kids. But, but, but see, I, I, I think send them to hell because uh, they'll get... Well, that is hell. Hell, you see... Well, this is hell in the sense, it's t- you know, taking away their power, taking away their hegemony, taking away their ability to manipulate and control and destroy people. This is hell. Death is, is too sweet for these people. And also, murdering them, murdering them traumatizes us. What we need to realize is these are people that have, are crazy. They've got abnormal brains. They're, they're indwelt by Satan. And uh, maybe we can actually, you know, let doctors like me get at them, you know. And figure out what's wrong with their abby normal brain. Why do they think it's okay to crash the world economy and kill us? Why do they think, including the, the you know, I call the crazy arm of the Republicans, think it's a good idea to decide to say we're not going to pay our bills because we're just going to stay home and not go to work? Doctor Bell, you're uh, completely right, and you're a good, kind human being. I'm sorry, I'm just a rotten so and so, and I think we ought to hang the bastards. But <laughs> well, hanging, <laughs> hanging, hang, hanging, co- hanging is cost effective. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Uh, so maybe uh, on, on budget, it's, it's much easier. Yeah. And you, and you, and the, uh, Here, here's the real situation. Last month, we came extraordinarily close uh, to the Third World War. We literally were at the precipice, but, but, and enough narcissistic members of Parliament in the British House of Commons woke up and said, Huh? Uh, this is going to have like a very big negative effect on me. You mean I can't play golf? I I can't do this. I can't do this. I could actually die if we start this. That's crazy. I'm not going to support this. And they said no. Yeah. And enough people well, uh, in Congress were were behind the scenes saying no. That we had to we. We took a, a 180 degree turn, and now all of a sudden we're finding that the Iranians are reasonable, and we might be cooking up a big grand deal. And Netanyahu and the globalists are foaming at the mouth because they're not, you know, we're moving away from war towards peace. And, uh, you know, but they're not done yet. You see, they have what, incredible no, powers. And we, the people, have to stand up. Uh, in a godly way and we have to say you guys are not only crazy you're demons you're right. you're you're, well, you're remember, stick yeah. and you're evil to the max yeah. evil to the core and you're not going to destroy our world uh it's not your world and just because you're you're thieves and you print all the money in the world and you think you can buy everybody you don't really own us you don't own this world god owns right. us and we're god's well, people Remember that uh, the book of Job where it talks about where have you been, Satan? God asked Satan. He said, I have been before the earth, roving to and fro to see mankind who has cursed you. And of course, and then God says, behold, my servant, my son, Job. He says, you know, the Job basically, uh, he said, and and Satan says, do not worry, God, I will make him curse you. That's what we're dealing with. Welcome back. And uh, Tim... The, uh, so what basically happened last night is to kick the can down the road. The real issue of the sequester has not been dealt with. The real issue of a healthcare bloated plan 
where people don't even have good software to sign up, but let's say everybody could be signed up. If you buy the gold well, level that plan, will be a your miracle personal because so far it's just about nobody is. But go ahead. Yeah, well, they're saying that there are some signing up. But let's say they solve it in the next three months and they sign up. There's what are they signing up for? They're signing up for what's basically catastrophic insurance. Yeah, there are people that are going to get quote subsidies so they can buy this catastrophic insurance. But it means most of the time, most of the benefits are going to be out of your pocket until you reach the deductible, which was the, the gold level, is going to be between ten and fourteen thousand dollars. So it basically means you're getting a pig and a poke. You're getting very high cost coverage for very low quality care, where most of the money is coming out of your pocket and making sure yeah, the it, drug it, companies and insurance it, companies. It very much strikes me as that uh, the college where right. I teach at, uh, we've been informed that uh, our insurance, our group insurance, ends uh, this December. So I've been looking at this, and I have a cataract on one eye. I'm thinking of having removed. And I'll tell you, it's, it, I get so frustrated every time I deal with the medical community. And uh, you're chief among them, but I have several friends that are physicians and several friends that are nurses and so forth. <clears throat> Uh, so it's it's not a personal thing, but I, the the they're American in an evil system. Medical they're... community is so corrupt, and the whole system is rotten to the oh, core. And I oh, thinking if they well once they capture you in the system too, your bills go crazy. You can spend two hours oh. in the emergency and spend twelve, thirteen thousand, even oh, just with an it. IV line and it. people waving at you from the curtain. It's just crazy. I hear stories all the time about people. I spent two hours in the emergency, and my bill was twelve thousand dollars, and the deductible was four thousand or five thousand. And people, yeah, tell me you're about kidding. it. And, and and then they use the courts to, uh, to 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 enforce it and try to take your homes and everything away from you. Uh, I, I I've got estimates in the last. 24 hours to do one cataract for my out-of-pocket expense ranging from $1,500 to several thousand dollars. And this is for a procedure that basically is done, you know, in, in, not, in, in not much more than a doctor's office. And it takes a few minutes and, and yeah. the guy does it. The one guy that, that he, well, they charge, the, they bill the insurance company, I forget, eight or nine or 10,000. And I know the guy. I had I had dinner with him one night, and uh, uh, <laughs> it's just like oh, you got to be kidding me! What, what the hell? You you are you walking on water? Your 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 time oh, yeah. is that valuable that I I Tim, have to Tim, pay you Tim, eight thousand dollars for a few minutes of your time? Yeah, Tim. I I did a, a, a rotation through uh, ophthalmology and eye surgery, so I've done the cataract surgery uh, on people. And I can tell you, it takes all of about 20 minutes. If you have a steady hand and good vision and good binocular, you know, slit lamp microscope when you're doing it, uh, it's nothing. You can make a simple slit along the limbus of, the, of the, uh, uh, that portion of the cornea. You simply slide into the anterior chamber. You cut the zonular fibers for, for the lens and you pull it out with a little cold probe. Uh, then you insert the lens and you re-suture it into position so it stays in the locked position in the back of the of, of the lens cavity, you know, if you want to call it. And you're done. And you back out of there and grow sutures across the cornea with a proper, uh, you know, stitch across the cornea so it can't, it can't affect the central visual axis. And you're out of there. Then you simply put a little metal patch over the eye and you're done. So. You know, for people to, to pretend that this is a procedure that should justify a ten thousand dollar fee, it's part of the whole process that I say what we should have is primary care doctors should be the boss, hiring everybody from massage therapists to you know to to cooks to specialists in neurosurgery, and everybody should be paid a salary based on on years of experience, training, and public service and research and publications, and. Uh, they should have reasonable hours, so they don't work themselves quote to death. They have time to study, time to stay competent, time to well, go to conferences. Well, you know, part of uh, the unreasonable hours, there's a two-fold factor. Is when you're when these guys are going through residency, and they all have to go through residency now. Uh, they have a a low price doctor slave, and part of the indoctrination of uh, physicians is literally it's 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 like running a, the, a gauntlet. And well, it, it actually. It's part of so mind control. Exhausted. It's part of mind control. We had uh, yes, the Vancouver is, Journal, much. which is uh, the Vancouver Journal, where I did my internal medicine, has 
first and second year. It's the largest hospital system outside the Karolinska in Sweden, in the world. Larger than anywhere else, larger than UCLA or anywhere else. Vancouver General. 17 buildings, almost 7,000 inpatients. The emergency department is a couple hundred beds, just the emergency. Wow. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, I was on call for half of it. Now, we had six residents in first year and six in, in second year. Two of the residents committed suicide in the first and second year, and two quit. So we had four residents gone out of 12. That so tell uh, you there I, might be a problem. Right. So I was working literally, and this is when we started, 36 hours on, 12 off. And then when we lost these residents to either Bitty suicide... A patient that has a doctor who's been awake for right. 36 hours and has to well, make one, a one, that decision. One doctor jumped out the ninth floor window, another one gave themselves an IV of, uh, of a barbiturate and died basically in respiratory failure from suicide. And the other two just quit because they had enough. And they had me working on one stretch, 22 days straight, with only any scheduled sleep. 22 days. <laughs> so that's the craziness. Now... This is not good. I saw more patients than most people would see in, in probably 10 years, to be honest with you. I'm not exaggerating, because on average shift, I oh, would probably I, I, see... I, I have heard stories one-on-one -on -one from so many people, yeah. you know, this, this nightmare that they put people through. Oh, it's a nightmare, and, it, and, it, and it's, it's, it's cruel. But it, also, it, it also hardens doctors to think of breath. someone expiring is almost like somebody sneezing. Uh, doing a procedure, you be really good at procedures, but the fact is you're not a machine, and eventually your health starts to go. Uh, I mean, you know, when doctors literally, I remember working as a internist working in an intensive care unit, and it wasn't unusual usual at all to see another visiting internist working his butt off in the middle of the night, and he killed over. We slapped the paddles on him, and he ain't coming back. He's going to see <laughs> Jesus. He's going to see Jesus. He, he was coming in to do his late night rounds. This was his last round. <laughs> last round. You know, that, that is beyond terrible. Uh, well, this, this is a stupid system, by the way. It's, a, it's not better in Canada or anywhere. People say, oh, they should look up to Canada. No, that's not a public health care system. That's an indentured slavery system where you still have fee-for-service, but the doctor has to pay the nurse and the mortgage and everything else, and out of his minuscule salary he gets left, he can barely make it if he's a primary doctor. If he's a specialist, he's making you know, some more. But the fact is, you've got a system where the government will pretend they've got national health care. Real national health care is we have a national tax and a state tax. You flow through to the county. You don't have redundancy of too many MRI scanners or this or that. you got the specialists are totally under the toe of the primary care doctors. Everybody else works for primary care through the county. Well, There's not, no government interference. Today. If you go in the hospital, you may have the best primary care physician on earth. You may have searched for him. He's the best. You love They have him. no authority at all. Well, as None. soon as you walk through that door or carry through that door, goodbye. It's the hospitalists that control everything. Right, and what happens to the hospital is basically they're often prima donnas and they work on a shift. And when they're gone, it's like uh, going to a restaurant and your favorite uh, maitre d' and, 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 and server is there. And if you're a family and member it, and you come back in uh, one day, well, she's off. You're, you're dealing with him. You're dealing with him. Yeah, exactly. That's a spice in your genetics. Well, now that we've talked about the uh, so-called dance with the devil, remember, uh, uh, you know, Jack Nicholson and The Shining, and he had that scene with the dance with the devil in the deep blue in the, in the, in the, in the moonlight? Well, that's what we had last night with these maniacs, including Obama and both Republican and Democrats. They're all, none, none is guiltless. They're trying to look for a good guy in this whole scheme of thinking. We have a... Major the deficit good of good are guys. Out back here. throwing up. <clears throat> yeah, they're they're all vomiting. The the fact is, people like Daryl Issa had to vote. He was our congressman locally for the stoppage of this because he's the richest congressman there. And the reason is, he knows this is bad for business. You don't shut down your business. You don't just say, "I'm going to drink coffee and not go to work." You don't go and ruin your credit rating so you can prove a point, which means you're not going to be able to afford to pay anything off. Uh, you know, when you have past things, now we have the same encumbrance going on with radioisotopes. Fukushima Daiichi, the greatest disaster in human history, and we're about to see this giant, we call oatmeal radioactive mush, cause a pyrophoric fire. Now, for people who don't know what a pyrophoric fire is, Chris, I'd like you to explain it and I'll kind of add some details. But as these 
borinated rubber breakdown, so you don't slow the neutrons, as these corium kind of mush together, uh, as it all becomes mixed with, of course, the, the aquifer that's flowing underneath the whole plant, because it's literally built on an aquifer flowing from further in on the island of Hanshu, flowing in underneath the drought to the ocean. We have a disaster of biblical proportions. This is literally, you know, maybe we'll call this the book of, uh, you know, the, <laughs> the, the book of, you know, the end, you know, the, the book of judgment. And what we have going on right now is a disaster of, literally, if you read this in the Bible, if you say, and then the, the seas parted and the, and the death spread from Fukushima Daiichi and the sea life departed from this world and the oceans turned red with blood. Does that sound biblical? Guess what? It's happening right now. The sea lions are dying. The starfish are dissolving and turning to goo. We're seeing all kinds of weird things happen and people are not paying attention. Hmm. And we don't have any action whatsoever from the idiot in chief Obama or any of the you know, so-called agencies. The South Koreans have enough clues that they're actually filing through the International Court of Justice. Chris, what's going on? Because this disaster is gaining speed. We had a little reprieve where the radiation level dropped again, but it's on its way back up. The next burp of radiation, because they had the typhoon and the earthquake. You know, when we have a pyrophoric fire, which is what I expect to be the next event, a pyrophoric fire means these things go on fire to six to 8,000 degrees. A pyrophoric fire means it's going to inject giant amounts of radiation into the atmosphere and the oceans. We are going to be facing an extinction level event, and people don't know how to recognize what's called low level chronic radiation toxicity. And there's a thing called a pet cow effect, P E T K A U, if you want to know it's a Canadian uh, phys physics scientist. And we are facing the uh, very real danger to the newborn, the unborn, the elderly. Uh, many different species are not radio resistant, I mean, non cockroaches. <laughs> that uh, we're going to see many species of the ocean and the land die. We're also going to see the death of phytoplankton that allows to convert carbon dioxide to oxygen, so the carbon oxygen cycle in the largest ocean on Earth, and by the way, this communicates with every other ocean, is basically could go between the ultraviolet light shock, which is, by the way, sped up from the Fukushima Daiichi radiotoxins, like radioiodine, xenon, argon, etc., these are already chew up the upper ozone layer and cause more ultraviolet light to kill more phytoplankton. And if you get a major die-off, guess what happens? You get a dinoflagellate bloom, which produces demoic acid that kills all fish and all living things in the ocean. That sure as heck sounds biblical to me. We're on the edge of a global catastrophe of biblical proportions. Tell us more. Well, you know, there's a website I was looking at about, uh, if you remember, we talked a lot about uh, the FOIAs, the Freedom of Information Act uh, responses that were asked of, from, from the media and from alternative media about, uh, oh, back in the time frame of April of 2011 and see what, what was really going on. And a lot of those were released. There's a website in Hattrick Henley, as, uh, and I was looking at it this week. He just put out another uh, blog. I sent you a link to his uh, website, and uh, what he did was he put a lot of those in order. You know, some of the things that we had done also, and he had some he had some good comments about it. I wrote, I give credit where credit's due, and uh, the pyrophoric fire on unit on unit four spent fuel. They may have actually had it. it it's uh, it's not conclusive that what was the cause of the explosion on unit four, and it's not conclusive where did the hydrogen come from. And it would indicate that uh, that they did have uncovery of the fuel at, at one point. So there is a lot of evidence in those FOIAs, and it's all strung together, so you don't have to go ahead and uh, four through Chris, is that the engine. MOX plant? Is it four uh, no, or three that's four. the MOX plant? The, the MOX is the third, third one, yeah. The, yeah, so the three is a MOX plant. The four is a, is the SP4 cooling pool. Yesterday pool. there was the, a story out that there's a mountain 20 kilometers from <clears throat> Fukushima uh, that's kind of in a town, and on all sides of that mountain they're finding plutonium and a variety of other things. And, you know, one atom of plutonium ingested in the human body will kill you because it radiates nonstop. It keeps radiating, radiating, radiating. And you will die of something from that. 
And it, it's just, by the way, there's a story that biologists found pink salmon that are now canary yellow on Canada's Pacific coast. The insides are also yellow. Heart parts, gill arches, spines, cartilage in the head, uh, spines are swollen, liver spotted, and some have bugged out eyes. Unbelievable. In Canada. I mean, that's thousands of miles away from there. Well, it took a long time to get across, but uh, actually, that's, that's probably the, just the tip of it. Yeah. Well, so, what, what, here's, what, here's what I think is going to happen. Remember now, these are extinction level events, and, and you've got to see the big picture. If you read Agenda 21, if you go right back to the Global 2000s books, it goes back 2000 and before. If you read all the World Watch Institute, if you read all these documents by their own words, the globalists from the Georgia Guidestones to all their documents from the World Health Organization want to reduce the world population 95%. They want it to be under 500 million, preferably around 200 million to 500 million for the whole world from roughly almost 7 billion. Now, they're not just going to give people kind of like a free pass to go to Mars or the moon or terraform Titan. They're going to kill them. OK, and you can kill them in lots of different ways. And, you know, as they say, when you have a, when you're a master chef, you can flambe the shrimp, saute them. You can dice them. You can mix them in a salad. You can do all kinds of things. What they're doing is they're cooking us from the inside out. This is the literally radioactive frogs in the beaker death it's just destroying our, di our dna and it's not something you can walk backward from when you start destroying the dna of living things in the ocean of the biosphere of humankind it's not something you can walk back from <clears throat> the bioaccumulation is going to affect humankind forever now there are things that we need to think out of the box as i mentioned on the show before we can literally think of radioisotopes as a diamond with a facet fault line that if you shatter along that fault line you create non-radioactive daughters. Nikola Tesla mentioned this before. I've had other comments that the subharmonic frequencies at the right frequency can shatter radioisotopes. We know that even when the sunspot occurs in the sun or major coronal mass ejection storm occurs, it actually changes the T1 half on Earth because it changes what's called the Higgs field. The Higgs field is embedded space-time in the Higgs field, which is the fifth dimension, and that Higgs field is what we call dark matter, matter dark energy. That's what they give them the so-called Nobel Prize in physics for the Higgs field research, the God particle. Now, what we have is they've, they've separated tier one science and tier two. And they've tried to recruit me into tier one science repeatedly, right from when they wanted me to go into nuclear physics at MIT, to uh, do research in various projects, and eventually to get in Q-level security clearance at NORAD, U.S. Space Command. So I understand deeply how evil this government is and how it's run by corporations and ultimately by Satan. And if people don't believe in Satan, you're just a dummy. You're out of touch with reality. If you don't believe in God, you're lost. You have literally suicidal, not only physically, emotionally, but spiritually. This is not just an opinion. It's just the facts. And if you don't understand that we're dealing with something that requires a supernatural intervention and out-of-the-box thinking... So, Chris, let's go through some of the news items you sent uh, over... Uh, that kind of, you know, highlights the severity of what's going on. And, and I want, what I want to do is appeal to those people out there that have what, a high, what to call a high GE ratio. They're more greedy than they're evil, which means they want to live. Even if they're greedy, they say, damn it, I got a billion dollars or a hundred billion. I don't want to die. I know these guys just get off their jollies killing people or destroying the planet, but I'm not, I'm not on board which would happen to these host of lords and the people in the British Parliament and happen to other people, including what I call Vladimir, Prince Vladimir, Mr. Nyet, and says he can't prosecute a war against America, but he sure as hell can stop it. And, of course, they're now testing the new RD-26 rocket, which is going to completely neutralize our ability to stop a nuclear attack against European and American cities. So go Vlad. Saying Nyet to America and the globalist banksters is really damn good. And the fact that you're a Eastern Orthodox Christian, go for it, you know, St. Vladimir. A, uh, we British need... peer, a British peer uh, <clears throat> turned in a resolution to the Nobel Prize Committee recommending uh, Putin for the Peace Prize. Go so for it. I would, I, would, I would second that motion immediately. Now, what we don't want is we don't I want, uh, we, I, Russia, I we don't want Russia, though, to, we don't want Russia to, to tilt to the other side and then get aggressive like the original prophecies that you would aggressively fight and, you know, and try to, to wrest power from the world. 
the fact is war is obsolete. There's no such thing as winning a war in the future. In fact, we've had the effects of a third world war. So, Chris, go through these news items because I want people to understand this crisis is getting worse by the day, by the week. And we have in our future, in the next few months or years, a pyrophoric fire, uh, increasing earthquakes. More, there's another typhoon apparently heading directly for the eye is heading for uh, Fukushima Prefecture. You heard about that, right? Another typhoon is heading yeah. directly toward them. We fa- we fa- or how do you pronounce it? I can't pronounce it, but it's on its way, and it's yeah, a big sucker. And it's literally, it's like, you know, it's a, it's a direct headshot to Fukushima, which means you've got unstable structures there that are like in an oatmeal of nuclear waste. You've got uh, buildings ready to fall over that could go into a pyrophoric fire that water won't put out. You have a completely Dr. incompetent Dr. Dr. government. Dr. Dr. Yeah, you got ob- tons, tons of rain that goes into, that goes in, gets yeah. into the crevices of the building. Go washes out and comes out contaminated, highly contaminated. And you can't stop yeah. that runoff. You have a buildup right. that also causes the uh, underground flow of water to increase. And right. we well, know that that's a big problem. Can you go through your stories? Because we're going to post them up so people can see them. You have the first one is something wicked this way comes the story of Plumegate, and uh, then you have some other stories. Let's go down through some of these and and mention just the highlights of some of the players to so people can read the details later. But they need to understand that this is not something we're theorizing could happen. It's something that is now in process and getting worse by the day, and it's a global, worldwide catastrophe. Well, the first one was that uh, hat trick Henry WordPress. Uh, dot com. Like I said, he did a pretty good job of, of stringing together a lot of the FOIA responses and where there are a lot of email back and forth on how it actually shows how our Nuclear Regulatory Commission handled it. And ha- they were asking some good questions in the beginning, and then and somewhere along the way the communications broke down and they started to control information instead of letting it flow. And you could see how, how that played out, and uh, they didn't really know what was going on, and they, they were doing a lot of conjectures. There was a lot of information given out about Unit 4, which was, like, which was still one of my, that, that's always my, one of my biggest concerns, because we still, that's a lot of fresh fuel just sitting out in nowhere. And that could have had a uh, drained uh, a drain spent fuel pool, and we still didn't know. So at that point, a fire for fire, by the way, to ask, answer your question, I mean, to put it simply, it's a class fire, which is a metal burning, very difficult to extinguish, and it's a, uh, if you remember your, the old mag wheels from the old days, they used to sometimes catch on fire, they'd burn hot, and you know, when you pour water on them, they get hotter. So, uh, yeah, I was a volunteer fireman and went to a, uh, a fire of a, an old Volkswagen van that uh, had ma- a magnesium engine. We could not put it out. Yeah, yeah magnesium is amazingly... It's it's a pyrophoric metal. Have you ever seen magnesium burns? It burns at what four or five thousand degrees. It's like crazy, yeah. And it's it's like a sparkler actually. Now let's go through some more of the uh, these news items sure. before we lose time here, Chris. Because uh, people okay. need to grasp that you know if there's listeners out there that are nuclear experts, if there's policymakers, they need to understand you know this dance which didn't need to occur at all. To be honest with you, you don't close down government to deal with your past commitments and your future plans for debt. The debt can be solved by repatriating printing dollars here in America by a treasury and not paying interest, getting rid of bad debt by letting the too big to jail banks go to jail. Uh, number three, getting the, the Glass-Steagall Act in and stopping transferring billions of dollars every month to banksters that need to go to hell, literally. And that hell means to be a steel toilet, a concrete cell, no day passes or iPads. This, and then we look at these stories and we see TEPCO forced to drain water outflow from Typhoon, the two, Fukushima plant. Right. Forced, forced. These people didn't even put proper rivets on the lower tanks, so they're squirting radioactive water on the workers. And the workers are in such poor states, they're shaking, they've got radiation sickness. They're not even allowed to use their full uh, use of their of their dosimetry cards because the Yakuza that sent them there sent them there to die, to pay off their debt. Well, you know, that, and that, that's, a, that's a really good point because uh, a lot of the mishaps and, and mistakes that we've been reading about lately uh, has been blamed on workers' lack of morale. That was uh, from the uh, the head of their NRA now. He said, well, lack of morale. These guys are working uh, for slave, like under uh, indentured uh, conditions in uh, highly radioactive areas where you have to wear respiratory yeah. protection. 
Yeah, it's, here, it's, here, it's, here's a, a made-up conversation. You make that with Yakuza. We send you to work, Tepco. You <laughs> do not work at Tepco. You do not hide the symmetry card. We bring samurai sword on all your family. Some of these guys have have literally passed out the first day when they right. got there. Now, let's go through some of these other stories. We've got okay. the chaos in Fukushima. Here's an example. We've already had big burps. The biggest one was this typhoon and earthquake, which the radiation level went from two times background to five times. And some of the places people think, well, if you're closer, like in Southern California, poor you know. Idaho, higher altitudes, Colorado, Vermont, East Coast, the United States, you think you're safe. Don't think like that. And also don't think it's safety that you have, can have all these nuclear materials sitting on places like San Onofre with songs, 1,400 to 1,800 tons, or all these nuclear plants like the uh, the plant is right by New York City, what's that one called, Indian Point. Uh, these have 50 to 60 years of radioactive isotopes. They never reprocess the rods. In fact, we had a treaty with the Japanese that didn't allow them to reprocess the rods and get them off site. Did you know that? So for 50 years, they forced the Japanese who could easily develop technology to move it off site and reprocess them. They said, no, you keep those nuclear materials right on site. Sit them right at there, right smack up against that seawall, right up against that, that fault line, right up against that tsunami. Don't you worry, Japanese, we're the boss. <laughs> that's what we said to them. Oh. Is that sickening or what? Yeah. And that's our so-called, that's, that's General Electric, one of the czars under the abominator, the abomination that shall desolate. Well, he's also had Axelrod, who was uh, a, a consultant to the board of directors of Exelon, also. Yeah, uh, but by the way, the, the, the so. starfish epidemic. General Electric, they say they, by the way, oh, owns NBC. Yeah, but exactly. Now, by the way, the starfish goo thing, they're saying yeah. it happened last fall in the North Atlantic. Now, people need to grasp this. If they think, well, it's okay if I get my fish from the Atlantic Ocean, that may be somewhat okay, but you have to understand that there's going to be transorbital or transpolar radioactive plumes. They're going to go right over the pole. You're also going to have ocean water that in 26 months is going to carry to every ocean on Earth. High speed moving, they can carry the sheer water of these big you know, seagulls that go literally at ocean all the time. They're not at land. They're at the ocean all the time. And the fact is, all of our oceans on the planet are being poisoned. All. You can't just move to the southern hemisphere. We're all being poisoned. What do starfish eat? They eat bivalves, you know, uh, mussels and, and clams. Those right. are filter feeders. So right. they're really getting that. that that's the bioaccumulation right. effect. That we right, right. So the like they're in the coal mine. Right, like the Hebrew law that says don't eat uh, shellfish. Uh, they had a, a discovery that if you eat shellfish that eats uh, dead dinoflagellates that have demonic acid, it causes dementia because it causes a non reversible cholinesterase inhibition in your brain, so it shuts off your brain pathways to remember anything. Uh, when you have radiotoxins concentrated by bivalves and the starfish eat them, see you later, starfish. Time to turn into goo. You know, uh, Patrick, you know, uh, from. Um, SpongeBob SquarePants is not going to have a good day. No, he's not. No, not a good day. Yeah, we need to get our leaders to get their act together and actually become leaders and stop playing politics or many blood sucking games like the dancing just did with our economy. God, guys. Yeah, pray, 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 face down in stack cloths and ashes for what's coming.